Who were the most barbaric colonizers in history? When we consider the heinous crimes that have been performed against humanity, there is one individual who is generally referred to as the most evil person to have ever lived. This individual is Hitler. But why is his name the only one that is associated with something nefarious? Why? When you murder more than 10 million Africans or Native Americans, do you not get portrayed as a villain? Hitler was hardly the only person in European history to commit heinous crimes against humankind, including acts of colonization, imperialism, slavery, and genocide. The term colonialism refers to the exercise of control by one power over a dependent area or people. In its most basic form, Colonialism can be defined as the practice of one country forcibly occupying and governing another country. The Europeans who were the first to settle along the east coast of the United States believed that it was their manifest destiny, or that God had given them the right, to lay claim to the territory for themselves and their posterity. Indigenous peoples, who had inhabited and cared for the land for millennia before European settlement, were driven farther and further west by the settlers as they extended throughout the entirety of the United States Continental Territory. Native Americans were relocated to reservations, which were generally uninhabitable and located in remote areas with little access to potential sources of income. In 1830, President Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act, which led to the forcible removal, relocation, and mass killing of thousands of indigenous people. President Donald Trump has praised Andrew Jackson, and the Indian Removal Act is honored on the $20 bill in the United States. In 1838, the Cherokee people were relocated westward after the United States government took possession of their territory and forced them to leave. On what would later become known as the Trail of Tears, a group of Cherokee people was forcibly removed from their homeland and forced to walk for thousands of miles. Here is a list of European colonialists that, in addition to Hitler, were successful in wiping off entire populations of people, all in the name of acquiring more territory, more wealth, or both. Number 7. King Leopold II of Belgium Leopold, King of Belgium, earned a massive personal fortune through the exploitation of the Congo, in the beginning through the collection of ivory and rubber by the people of the Congo. One of the most horrific things he did was order towns to collect a certain amount of pieces of ivory, and if they didn't fulfill their quotas, their hands were cut off. This was one of his worst crimes. The native population was effectively enslaved under his administration, and they were subjected to beatings, widespread murders, and regular mutilation, all of which contributed to the deaths of an estimated 15 million Congolese. His regime was responsible for all of these atrocities, this went on to become one of the most notorious scandals to occur on a global scale in the early 20th century. Number 6. General of the British Army Sir Evelyn Baring. In the year 1895, Europeans were interested in the rich and productive agricultural land that Kenya possessed. War was proclaimed against the people of Kenya while British General Sir Evelyn Baring was in command of the conflict. Anyone who delivered the so-called Mau Mau Oath, which was an oath of the Kenyan people that gave them the courage to fight for their country and their freedom, was subject to the death penalty under Bering's order. According to the Kenya Human Rights Commission, during the crackdown, the British government murdered, tortured, or dismembered 90,000 Kenyans to maintain possession of territory that did not belong to them. In addition, 160,000 more Kenyans were held in deplorable conditions. Number 5. Francisco Pizarro Conquistador Francisco Pizarro was infamous for his wickedness and was uneducated. He led the Spanish invasion that captured Peru. In the span of barely 15 years, he and his followers were responsible for the deaths of thousands of native people, the eradication of the Inca monarchy that ruled the empire, and the enslavement of all remaining survivors of the empire. He was very skilled in the use of torture, and he was notorious for putting Indians' eyeballs out to steal their gold. These deeds were carried out in an attempt to attain authority, amass wealth, and establish religious imperialism. Pizarro is one of the few guys in history who was able to alter the course of events in such a cruel and terrible way. Number 4. George Augustus Robinson 
It is estimated that 15,000 people were living in the area before the year 1803 when the British began colonization of the state of Tasmania in Australia. By the year 1833, there were just 200 people left alive out of the original population, assuring them that they would be safeguarded, cared for, and eventually have their lands restored to them. George Augustus Robinson, who was sponsored by Lieutenant Governor George Arthur, had persuaded the final 200 surviving Aboriginal Tasmanians to surrender themselves in exchange for the promise that their lands would be returned to them. These so-called assurances were, in point of fact, untrue. Robinson made promises to the survivors in an attempt to play on their desperate aspirations of reuniting with lost family members and members of the community. These survivors were taken from their homes and relocated to Flinders Island, where they remained there until they inevitably perished. Number 3. Hernan Cortez in Tenochtitlan to Aztec nobility. A short time later, shortly after each to the Aztec Empire, devastated the capital city and renamed it Mexico City after the conquest. Cortez was the one who secured the city and then subjected the native inhabitants to tremension, leaving only a small number of survivors. In the end, it is estimated that anywhere from 120,000 to 240,000 Aztecs were put to death. The initial stage of Spanish colonization of the Americas was kicked off by Cortez. Number 2. Napoleon de Bonaparte According to Claude Ribb, an expert in the history of colonialism in the Caribbean, Napoleon was the man who, for the first time in history, asked himself rationally the question how to eliminate, in as short a time as possible, and with a minimum of cost and personnel, a maximum of people described as scientifically inferior. Napoleon was the man who asked himself rationally the question how to eliminate, in as short a time as possible, and with a minimum of cost and personnel. Around the turn of the 19th century, the French Caribbean colony in Haiti was the richest in the world. It was an export factory powered by slave labor that produced almost two-thirds of the world's coffee and almost half of its sugar. Africans who were held as slaves were whipped and flogged to get them to work, and they were made to wear metal muzzles so that they couldn't eat the sugar cane. When slaves got rowdy, they were either roasted over slow fires or packed with gunpowder and blasted to bits. If they were both, they were executed. In addition, he issued orders that called for the deaths of the greatest number of black people in Haiti feasible to replace them with newly enslaved Africans who were more submissive. In the year 1802, a comprehensive plan to eliminate certain ethnic groups was put into action. Napoleon put an end to the practice of interracial marriage and issued an order that any white woman who had been in any kind of contact with a person of African descent or a mulatto, a person of mixed race, be deported to France. Number 1. Christopher Columbus Christopher Columbus' invasion of the Western Hemisphere in 1492 marked the beginning of 500 years of continuous indigenous genocide that ultimately led to the extermination of 95% of all indigenous people who lived in that region. This event is commemorated by the year 1492. Columbus, upon arriving in Hispaniola, immediately initiated policies of slavery, extermination, and extortion to steal the land and money for his benefit. This was done even though Columbus described the native inhabitants of Hispaniola as being peaceful and kind in his journal. In the years that followed Columbus's arrival, Spanish conquistadors such as Hernán Cortés and Francisco Pizarro would build upon the foundation of mass extermination that Columbus had established. Do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.